Namaste. Namaste, Katya. It's been so long that I've been on your show. So nice to see you. So nice to be here. So nice, so nice to see you also, Kaustuba. Thank you very much for uh, coming to uh, this show, as you said. <laughs> Sometimes it is a show, yeah? So uh, thank you again for coming uh, uh, on our interview. And thank you all for listening. Warmly welcome our dear, dear friends all over the world on this interview with Dr. Kaustuba Desi Kachar, our yoga teacher, Vini yoga therapist, author, healer, spirit and mentor for a lot of us, who is currently still in India, but want to travel, eager to travel all around the world. Yes, Kaustuba, yeah. So I'm Katya Ujcic. I am also a Vini Yoga therapist. I'm also expressive art therapist. And I am uh, my, by heart mostly specialized in awakening your inner giftedness and potential. And now I have to say a lot of people are uh, in one way in very, very deep depression or anxiety because the inner potential are starting really to call to express and come out i have that that, that feeling so today we are going to talk about months of not having an interview we are going to talk about science and spirituality so science and the sacred the quest for universal reconciliation but first, I think we are going to say hi to all our guests who are now here. Hitomi, hi, hello. We have Maria Alejandra Sierra Hernandez. So, wow, hello. And we have our Raven Yoga, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. So, and all the others. And all the others that are not uh, saying hi to us, we are nevertheless saying hi back. Yeah, goes to work. <laughs> so um, um, when we we talk about uh, our next interview, this um, title came out, and it was a very 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 interesting for me. So why you will see in the following interview with Kaustuba, we are going to put him on a grill, <laughs> on a grill. <laughs> yeah, I feel but like, nevertheless, I feel like I'm taking a, an exam in high school, so nervous, so anxious about this topic. The last topic was but very we, easy for me because the last interview I did was with uh, Maria and uh, Andreas. Yeah, about movies it was so interesting and finally i got to see the movie soul that they had sent me so it was yeah. much more easier than this one now this one i'm really anxious because it feels like i'm sitting for a high school exam oh i'm so sorry but uh, i think you will pass we will see in the end uh, uh our dear guest here will help us will help me to evaluate <laughs> So maybe for support, my dear friends, press a, a heart or uh, some sort of emoji for Kaustuba uh, to support him, but also support me, of course. So in ancient times, people um, subconsciously somehow connected spirituality to science. For example, let's say moon mantra, yeah? praying to a planet, a planet that is now actually uh, um, an element of of research yeah so shamans which is uh, sorcerers uh, yogis also they were at the same time not just spiritual but also in a way also scientists yeah nowadays in the majority of science let's say the moon mantra will be like a silly practice but nevertheless the, let's say the pills uh, in in uh, in the pharmacy, they are made from plants that ancients were using for healing and helping. So we cannot deny the roots and the connection between science and the spirituality. So it looks like they are inevitably intertwined. But before we going to start uh, to dive into this. Uh, 
uh, mysteries, I will ask Kaustuba to chant a little bit and that we have a good energy and good support also from Divine. Namaste. Namaste. Om Suryascha Mahamanyuscha Manyupatayascha Manyukrutebhya Api Bhyurakshantam Yadratriya Papamakarsham Manasavachahastabhyam Padhyam Udarena Sheshnyam Ratre stadavalam patuam Yat kinchaduritam mai Idamaham maam Amrita yonawa Surye Jyotishi Johome Swaha Namaste, thank you very much. So what was the chant about, Kaustuba? Oh, because you talked about the shamans and you talked about uh, how they would take the plants and make into medicine. I chant this because this is the chant that honors the sun and in, in Ayurveda, uh, they are normally, uh, the plants are not just given as a chemical, but they are often chanting the mantra for the sun to bless the uh, the medicine and that is when it becomes a medicine not before the chant but after the chant before that it's only matter but with mantra we are doing what is called prana pratishtha and converting matter into spirit so Wonderful. this is where the sacred becomes part of the material world and it's very very uh, powerful and potent very very good so we are going to talk also about that yeah uh in, in yeah so it's very important of course it actually becomes sacred when when it's blessed yeah correct so we are welcoming here amandep singh kandahari hello i'm sorry my slovenian pronunciation kandari natalie yeah, Natalie. Hello, Natalie and Aurelie. Hello. Uh, so nice to, to read you here. So um, regarding the science, I have to admit I love science. I wanted to study physics, but uh, the life took me in other directions. I am learning now a lot about quantum physics, about astronomy, about universe. Of course, just by myself, yeah? And also, I love spirituality. I'm a dedicated student and also practitioner of spiritual practice. I'm almost on every uh, Kaustub's courses. <laughs> so, uh, furthermore, my practice that I offer uh, as a therapist is a combination of both. It's the modern approach by Karel Gustav Jung and art therapy, and also uh, ancient wisdom. So. 
uh, I always had the feeling that they belong together, like mother and child, like teacher and student, you know, like si science and spirituality. So if this is somehow true, it is a difficult uh, question, I know, but why or is it possible to know why the spirituality split from from um, uh, science split maybe from spirituality in the past? Uh, I don't know who separated from who, but you are right that today uh, science and spirituality seem to be on two opposite sides of the spectrum. Uh, but if we look at the history, history of human civilization, the word for the spirit in English language is often called consciousness. And consciousness is probably in uh, Spanish and uh, Latin languages, conciencia. It comes from the word science, conciencia. Ciencia is the word in Latin for knowledge, to know, to know. And uh, this is the origin of the word for the spirit in, let's say, in Western languages. In, in, in Sanskrit, the word for knowledge is jnana, which is coming from the other extreme, anati, which is consciousness. So in a certain way, the Western language looks at consciousness as that which is with knowledge, whereas in the oriental traditions, like in Indian Vedic tradition, it's actually the opposite. Knowledge is that which is coming out of that which knows, because there should be a knower for there to be a known. So knowledge cannot exist without there being a knower. And that knower is the spirit or the consciousness. Whereas in the Western approach, it comes from conscience. Yeah, the, the knower is the one who has the knowledge or who has this knowledge. So there's a slight difference in the way they, the concept is looked at. However, but however, what is undeniable is the connection between the two. Is the connection between the two. Who knows is sacred. What is known is knowledge or information that is the science. So in traditional times, there was no separation between the two because it's almost like the knower is there to know and the known is there to be known. Yeah. So in a certain way, this was the approach. And the fantastic thing was traditional science was always connected with to know the highest truth. To know the highest truth in Vedic tradition, in the Oriental tradition, we call this Brahma Vidya, the knowledge of the Supreme, the Divine. And it's the same in Occidental tradition because in the original days of knowledge, knowledge was always about to know God, to know the Divine, not necessarily a Catholic God or a, a Judaistic God or a Islamic God, but to know the Divine in its full form. So because pre-Abrahamical religions, we had the pagan religions. They were also connected with consciousness and spirituality. Yeah. And for them, God was something different. They defined it something. So always the concept of science was to know the divine. And if you look even historically, why did people, where did people use science? When you look at some of the temples that are in India that are 1,200, 2 years old, 2,000 years old. When you go to Egypt and look at the pyramids that are 5,000 years old. When you go to Europe and you see all the churches that are built that are 2,000, 3,000 years old. Unfortunately, there are many, many beautiful temples also built in Israel and the Palestine region, which are very old, but they got destroyed by all the wars. They were all using science to build houses for God. The highest science was reserved 
to build houses for God. And that is why you have such wonderful reverberations when you chant in such buildings and you pray in such buildings because they wanted to capture the essence of the sacred in a structure. So in the old days, I strongly believe that there was no separation between the approaches of science and the sacred because they were moving along the same path. However, at some point, the focus on what is to be known changed. The focus on what is to be known changed. This is because wow. yeah. what is to be known became focused on materialism because they started to come schools that wanted to what you call reach the masses and the masses could not really understand what was not necessarily an intangible form like spirituality like sacredness and therefore therefore they focused on materialism and you have schools like the Charuaka school and other materialistic schools where they believe that only what is measurable is real. Everything that is not measurable is not real. And that is where the divorce happened. And that is where the divorce happened. In modern science, we have to qualify because old science was connected to spirituality, but modern science became a tool to validate the power of matter and so it started to separate. That's why the technology of science did not change, the focus changed. Yeah. When you look at India, for example, we have 108 Upanishads in the Vedas. That's a number that they just give. It basically in Indian uh, translation, it means there are many. 108 does not mean there is exactly 108. In India, it just means that there are many because we are not so precise in our numbers. But each of these Upanishad is qualified as an Upanishad only when they arrive at the teaching of Brahma Vidya, the knowledge of the divine, the knowledge of the highest. But the goal is the same. We all have to understand the knowledge of the highest. But every Upanishad approaches differently to arrive at the same conclusion. And that was science. When modern science starts to change in matter, in matter, there is a need for trivializing things, simplifying things, because materialism is for those with a lower capacity to reflect lower capacity to understand the subtle and that because they can only understand the gross. So it's it's not for the those with a higher mind. And that's why those who believe only in material science, to, to some degree, they are a little bit dumb because they cannot understand the subtle. And that's where the shift happened because if you take a population, <laughs> The majority of the population is only going to be average people or below average people. They are not extraordinary people yeah. in masses. Any civilization you take at any point of history, the geniuses are only very few. And those this are crazy. Fun. And those yes. are crazy. Yes. Yeah. But not all those who are crazy are geniuses. Like take for yeah, instance. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not a genius, but I'm a bit crazy, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a bit crazy, but I'm nowhere close to being a genius uh, in my in my understanding. So the, the thing was, when democracy started to manifest in Western civilization, you needed methods to reach masses. And the way to easily reach masses was to make something very simple for people to understand. So modern science is not actually rocket science. 
it's actually yeah. a dumbed down version of understanding this world actually a technology a tool to influence the masses and turn them towards what you call group decision making because then it's easier to control society and that is where the separation happened and that's why when you look at the sacred the spiritual where more and more intangibles are involved there are lesser and lesser people at the top if you look at any hierarchy it's a pyramid structure and it always there are lesser and lesser people at the top yeah. so that's why the most fantastic minds are very few in number and so that's where the separation happened when people started using uh, democracy as a way to gain power and they started using science as a way to influence knowledge in a material frame so that they could control people's decision making powers to take a look at today's example how many people are taking the vaccine because of so called science now we don't know if really there was enough scientific evidence whether the scientific evidence is actually valid because maybe the pharmacies are funding the research and they try to bias the research findings we don't know but there are many many examples like that which actually promote this for example few years ago when i was traveling in europe i read an article where they the title of the uh, article in the swiss newspaper was drinking coffee during the toilet reduced constipation okay so drinking toilet yeah. uh, coffee while in the toilet <laughs> yeah. reduce constipation this was scientifically proved but when you read the small print in that it says who funded this research it's the coffee association of the world and yeah. who is the largest seller of coffee today is nestle it's a swiss company yeah. and they made these nespresso machines so but the title is very deceiving to the people where they say oh it's scientifically proven that drinking coffee reduces constipation obviously they want more people to drink coffee you don't need coffee to get rid of constipation hot water will do but because there is an agenda to promote to influence people's decision making science and the sacred went two different directions that's the problem yeah you i am i am uh, uh, astonished actually uh, uh, how this is actually very let's say accurate yeah and at the same time i'm terrified because you know nowadays science actually it's dumb you know for dumb more dumb people or like uh, not you know judging anything but uh, just to explain more dramatically in a way yeah, yeah? So, that's yeah. the pro that's the problem now with people in the yoga as well where they are claiming to be so called modern day scientists and dumping down yoga even uh by yogis they call themselves medical doctors or research scientists and they just dumb down yoga and it's dangerous they say oh you know 200 yeah. kapalabhati will reduce your uh, blah 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 and you know uh it's very 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 uh, difficult to see this happening but it is becoming dumb science and the scientific community is becoming more and more dumb unfortunately there are of course some people who are like the cream on the top and all those who are on the top they all know that science and spirituality cannot be separated you take einstein for example considered one yeah. of the brightest minds of our modern era he always talked yeah. about the god he always talked about god you take carl gustav jung who is a scientist he talked about bhagavad yeah. gita a lot he studied the bhagavad yeah. gita so there be some of these great minds you see they know that science is just a, a very close has a, has to have a very close connection to the sacred it cannot be only based on material science see materialism tries to put everything within a box yeah 
Say, for example, there is space all over my in my room. Now, if I take an empty cup and put it and I actually close it with a cap, there is some space trapped in that cup. But can I say that that is only space and not what is outside? It's what we try to theorize, hypothesize something and come to a conclusion and put a box around this knowledge and say, only this is knowledge. Whatever is outside this is not knowledge. And that is dangerous. It's dangerous, yeah. And that is dangerous because there is so much outside this box that we have to keep our minds open to. I'm glad you said you are a scientist or you believe in science because I also believe in science because I have actually finished my PhD in a scientific study but i'm not really uh, of a fan of modern science which is focused only on materialism because i believe science is not only meant for materialism science is also meant for something much greater than materialism and that's what we all should start focusing on yes so talking about the science yeah majority is is let's say about uh, uh uh, reading book, publishing uh, researches, observation, let's say biology, uh, uh, anatomy, about experimenting, about calculating. It's, as you said, let's say it's about believing something that it's already existing, like it's some sort in a box and making maybe some new connections if if they are lucky, let's say, yeah? not putting down the work of the scientists, but really say, uh, uh, having this uh, uh, helicopter view from the point that you mentioned before. Yeah, so uh, it's based on the intellect that it has the limit. So the intellect has limitations. Yeah. So without is there without this this higher mind, the higher spirit, the divine. Is there no evolution for for human being? Is there no progress? Yeah, if the intellect is just limited, yeah. If the intellect is limited, then there is going to be great danger for humanity because it will promote fanatism and we will start fighting with each other. Yeah. Because what works in one context need not work in another context. So if we limit science to only as, you know, black or white, this is right, this is wrong, then it's quite dangerous. And many modern scientific uh, discoveries are based on trial and error or based on accidents. Penicillin was discovered by accident for example, yeah. one of the greatest discoveries in medicine. It's an accident. It's not really a well thought out uh, study. It was an accident. When you look at the old science, it was not necessarily based on accident. It was based on two things. Firstly, it was based on to know something that they did not know. So they had to keep an open mind because they have to go into the domain of the unknown. Mm -hmm. They were not trying to prove what they know or what they believe. They were going into the domain of the unknown for which you need a lot of open heartedness. You need faith. You need openness. Yeah. And that's in the heart. That's not in the mind. The brain, even though it's about the heart, it's actually of a lower caliber because heart is where the knower is. Yeah. And that's one of the greatest secrets of spirituality. Not always everything that is on the top is better. When you look at churches, the church is so tall, but where's the God? The God is below. When you go to a temple, the temple have a beautiful structure that's really tall and high. But where's the God in the sanctum? Is below. It's a metaphor. 
you know, to show us that we need to be open in our heart. And that is where we are lacking today because we want to use science to push an agenda today in modern science. Yeah. We are not open. We are trying to push an agenda. Whereas yeah. in ancient science, they were open. They wanted to know what they did not know, in which case, open hearted. And this is the big fear for many people when they come to spirituality today because spirituality is teaching us to enter the domain of the unknown. You will know, but you cannot know until you enter. See, in a swimming pool, you can touch the water and see how cold it is. And then you decide whether you want to go or not. That's materialism. That's experimental validation. You put your finger, oh, it's cold. Okay, I don't want to go. Put your finger another day, oh, it's warm. Today I can go. It's experimental validation. It works. But in spirituality, even if you go to the swimming pool of the heart, it does not yeah. have the same feeling every day. One day it will feel one way, another day it will feel another way. Yeah. One way it will feel contracted, one way it will feel one day it will feel expansive. And that's why the spiritual domain is unknown. And we have to be open in our heart, open in our mind to understand, to accept what is happening. We talked about children and parents. Not all children are the same. A parent can have three children. In my family, it's the case. My brother, myself, and my sister. It's my sister's birthday today. Happy birthday, my dear Mekala. It's Happy a, birthday. I, I already wished her in the morning, but <laughs> we have three. Of, no, we are three. <laughs> yes, we are three, but she's not on Facebook, so she won't care. <laughs> we are three. All of us are different. Yes. All of us are different. We are not the same. Same way, even if the parent is the same, we are not the same. Same way, when we go to the heart each time, it's different. When you go to one temple or another temple or another temple, it is different. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. That's where openness is important. Whereas modern science is bringing very strong borders. And that is the danger of modern science. It has happened in the last few hundred years where this kind of science, material science, has taken over government decision making because it is them who is influencing the thought of the people and therefore governments are loyal to them because they can influence people. And so they make, they make the governments make regulation that, okay, what we say is right, what we don't accept, you should ban. That's why if you go to many countries, Spiritual practices have been banned, like you talked about the shamans. In so many countries, herbal medicine is banned, even though it has been there for 2,000, 3,000 years. In India, there is a struggle between Ayurveda and Western medicine. Western medicine is trying to ban Ayurveda because it's, again, power and money. But 2,500 years, Ayurveda has been working. Does it mean that it's not working? Of course it is working. It's a different kind of science. It's not the modern day double blind study experimental validation science, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have its own science. And I think that is where the problem lies today. And we need to start focusing on trying to have openness. And that is the two different problems. The lower mind is what can reach the masses and therefore cause decision making. Well, uh, uh, also Nikola Tesla said that, that actually um, it is the, uh, the, the, his brain is just a receiver or something greater, yeah? And uh, he was also uh, uh, um, he was also wrote uh, actually a, a blog about it. Uh, he was also involved in uh, uh, some uh, Indian um, 
uh, some Indian gurus and also Einstein was uh, connected to the Tagore, the poet. Yeah, so it's they did acknowledge that. Yeah, they did acknowledge that. Uh, let's say connection to the spirituality. Yeah, and yeah. the insights that are coming from this greater spirit, from the from the divine. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so this spirituality starts with experience, maybe with some spiritual practices, like Buddha was sitting under the tree, Jesus when he was baptized, and that leads us to some sort of many of us also experience this, maybe some, let's say, mystical experience from divine, from connection to divine, from connection to ourselves. So, why is this connection also? A connection of the scientists and of the government, yeah, is scary to people. Are they afraid of progress? Are they afraid of their true nature? Or what actually is what they are afraid of? I think it's very simple. It's people are, are afraid to be smart. Oh. People are yes, afraid to be you are, you are right. You are right. I'm saying thank you for saying I'm right. I'm so happy to hear that. I've got a certificate from you. <laughs> but I don't know why I, feel, why I feel that. Because when you are smart, when you are intelligent, you have to take responsibility. Whereas when you're dumber, you don't have to take responsibility. And I think that is the biggest fear for people to become smarter because they don't want, and it's an unconscious, it's an unconscious fear in some people. It's a conscious fear in some people. For example, many people know that their relationship doesn't work, but they want to continue in that because they're afraid. Because if they, and that's why they want to stay dumb. They don't want to know what is a better relationship because they're afraid if they know, they have to do something about it. So in a way, unconsciously, people are afraid to be smart, whereas it's comforting to be a bit more dumb and ignorant. If I don't know, oh, I don't know. You can always say, I don't want, I didn't know. Therefore, you don't take responsibility. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to do. What can I say? I didn't know what to do. And I think that is the fear because fear of taking responsibility is very, very important. It's very, very important. When you look at, there are other fears as well, fear of the unknown, etc. because going yeah. into your connection is about unknown and things like that. But the moment you make a spiritual connection, you have to raise your consciousness and act according to that knowledge. And that people yeah. don't want to do because they're attached to their mistakes, they're attached to their problems. They're victims of their problems because the moment you know you're no, you don't have to be a victim. You have to do something about it. But people would love to be a victim and put the blame on somebody else. Oh, I'm not happy with my ex-husband or husband or wife. It's easy to put the blame on the husband or wife. Then take responsibility and say, you know what? I will live my life to the potential. That's why many people stay in bad marriages, stay in bad relationships, even though they know at an unconscious level that it's not right but they don't want to know at a conscious level or they kind of suppress it so that they don't do anything about it the same with traumas the same with yeah, certain exactly. bad habits like smoking or drinking or doing drugs etc they don't want to know because this will mean that they have to take responsibility i think that is the yes. problem but as i found that let's say in my my practice um, I found that the people who are, um, let's say, courageous enough to, to go on that road to live the fully authentic life, as you said, they have something inside. They have this willpower and the spark. And I'm saying this, it's like push and pull. You have the willpower, whatever, maybe in your ancient genes of some ancestors that you have, that actually something drives you. Or you have 
and 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 together with this spirit this this the the sparkle i said it's it's like a sparkle that pulls you uh that that uh, never uh diminished yeah and there are people who are and will just stay i'm saying in the swamp of their swamp of their life so they are not courageous in that they don't have the power the passion and this sparkle and the push and pull effect to go out of this nice warm maybe smelly uh, swamp but something that they are used to yeah I, I think there is something very fascinating in what you are saying and I think there's a second reason why they don't want that connection love themselves because in spirituality in the sacred path the emphasis is on loving yourself first respecting and honoring yourself mm -hmm. and that's when you get the knowledge you get the insight etc and the fascinating thing is and that kind of phenomena is called inspiration now yeah. inspiration does never 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 comes from science inspiration comes from intuition and insight a domain that is beyond the science now look at that word very carefully what is the meaning of inspiration inspire to breathe inspire yeah. to breathe in to breathe in to nourish yourself how can you be inspired if you don't love yourself yeah that's why exactly. when you start loving yourself you will have a lot of inspiration and this is what this spiritual path is all about this is a very 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 important thing and when you look at many many species of nature plant animals they don't function based on modern science they function based on inspiration insight intuition we are the only ones in this universe who have to go to university to get a degree to have this knowledge or that knowledge look at some of the animals a beaver builds a bridge but it never went to university yeah birds build yeah. a nest bird build a nest which is scientifically yeah. uh, sound because it takes into consideration balance imbalance so that when the chicken or the bird are sitting it will not topple you know so they talk think yeah. about the gravity they think about weight balancing but they never went to physics university they do it yeah. through inspiration and i think that is what humanity is lacking right now yeah exactly so actually to go on our inner path and our true authentic path it's then uh, nurturing ourselves it's the exactly. only way to love ourselves yeah yeah and love is not the self obsession with instagram and facebook and things yeah, like that not. yeah it's about respecting ourselves respecting the limitations of our body respecting the capacity of our body honoring the schedule of our body honoring the capacities of our mind etc and accepting that we are different from others and we are even different day to day yeah but also honoring i think that yeah but also honoring honoring these inner gifts our inner potentials our giftedness yeah not to just let's say some things that are lacking but also this divine potential inside yeah and today today talking like how you are talking like about giftedness will make people think that you are strange because this giftedness cannot be measured by modern science yeah how can modern that science kind of giftedness. giftedness yeah there are tests and so on but actually for me these tests are um, yeah um but why maybe some always sorry why, why do we need a test for something that is very obvious yeah you need a score yeah you need a, a material score like uh -huh, this is my score but actually it's very very it could be a lot of time the opposite yeah so that the very very high mind 
low, have a low score because the test is just for one little part of IQ tests we are talking about. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, Kostuba, there are some distinguished, let's say, scientists, also Nobel Prize winners like uh, Sir Robert Penrose, for example, that he talk about uh, consciousness or Dr. Rupert uh, Sheldrake, he's a biologist. So he also is uh, connecting consciousness to, to, to people and how the impact of the consciousness is on, on uh, um, uh, has on people or maybe some that are more populistic, like uh, Dr. Jody Spenza, Bruce Lipton, Deepak Chopra, they all have their own foundation, foundations and laboratories and research. They're doing a lot of research on how the consciousness actually is influencing the people. So it looks like maybe this merging or uh, uh, acknowledgement of the uh, divine, of the sacred started? I think the beginning of the conversation has started. And as I yeah. said earlier, I, I, I'm not at all against the science. I am a scientist myself. But the purpose of science, the focus of science, should not only be limited to the material domain. And science should not have an agenda behind. And that's why you talked about yeah. some wonderful scientists of the modern times who are perhaps the cream on the top where they realize that, okay, there's something beyond materialism and we have to explore it. So in a way, they are going back to the old science, trying to figure out ways uh, to build the bridges towards the old sign. That's why I said the beginning yeah. has happened, the beginning of the conversation, because still many of the people in our time, we are trying to measure things and try to fit into tangible framework, what is considered usually intangible. And that is a problem. Like, for example, if I love my partner, how can there be an instrument to def to to uh, uh, how do you say evaluate how much love I have for this partner? Is it more than the love I have for my dog? Is it less than I have for my friend? There is no tangible instrument for a concept like love, and spirituality and love. They're all in the same domain of the intangible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say that we have started this conversation and that is very good. And hopefully in more years, this will become even more closer because perhaps the consciousness of people should become higher where they are open to accept the intangible as yeah. it is and not try to fit it into a box and say, only this is that. It's like taking a cup of water from the ocean, which is so large and saying, only this is ocean water, nothing else, because it fits this glass. So we need to understand because the spiritual domain is like an ocean. We are a speck. Yeah, exactly. And we cannot try to fit into this box, the ocean of knowledge. Yeah. Even material knowledge is so much now. There's so many subjects. There's so many fields. We can know everything. But we cannot say on the contrary that only what we know is real, what we don't know is not real. Yeah, exactly. And even if we do some scientific evidence, it does not mean that lack of evidence means the non-existence of what you are trying to prove. We have to be and it's, Yeah. I actually starts in our own garden. It's like just my garden. It's important, not yours. Yeah, exactly. we start with uh, simple things, and then 
maybe you know grow grow larger but looks like there is also big split in 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 uh, humanity in general now a lot of tension a lot of negativity and uh looks like there are two very like many opposite opposites really cannot cannot see the garden of another person or a teapot of another person yeah. i will i will share a very cute story this happened in 1997 when i was the first time visiting uh, second time visiting europe uh, and uh, i was to do a seminar in uh, france and it was organized by one of my father's uh, students who was actually italian but she was living in paris her name was marina marina margarita and i was uh, i i arrived there in paris and uh, I was going to stay in her house during the conference uh, at the time. And she was living with uh, her husband and her mother-in-law, who at that time, the mother-in-law would have been something like a 90 years old lady from uh, Napoli. And the, this was perhaps one of my first experiences to Europe and to stay with an Italian family. and. Uh, she made, uh, they made some spaghetti with tomato sauce because I was vegetarian and I had never seen spaghetti in my life before that because in 1997 India I did not really have spaghetti or whatever. I had never seen that in my whole life and I was looking at it and I was not even knowing how to eat it. So they were teaching me and she was cutting the spaghetti like they would cut it for children and then it was giving me a spoon to eat it. The grandmother was shocked and she asked in Italian to her the daughter-in-law, like, uh, why is he, why are you doing that and this and that? And she, the lady explained, oh, they don't have spaghetti in India. Yeah. And the grandmother was, the, the lady, the elder lady was so shocked. I mean, I call her grandmother because at that time I was 22 years old and she was 90 plus. So yeah. that was the first night and I so I, I tried to sleep and in the whole night there was some kind of sound that was going on tarak, 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 tarak. and I couldn't sleep very well because my, my sleeping room they gave me was right next to the kitchen. And so the next day morning they asked me, Marina asked me, how, how did you sleep? I said, I could not sleep, there was always this sound. She said, I'll tell you why there was the sound. And so she takes me to the kitchen and we see that old lady had made like 10 kgs of spaghetti with that machine, the hand machine. Yeah. And and I, I said, why did she do 10 kgs? She said, she has made this for you so you can take it back to India because she thinks you don't have food in India. Because oh, in the wow. grandmother's mind, in the grand lady's mind, pasta was food. So if I don't have pasta, yeah. that means there is food yeah it was so cute but oh this is God. what we do it, that what we know is reality what we don't know we assume does not exist yeah and that is a cute story to explain the big problem that we have <laughs> but literally oh, she nice. makes them yes exactly <laughs> but yeah it's like that. It's like um, uh, uh, those who are who are eating meat. You know, when you say uh, you are vegetarian, yeah, but we have fish. <laughs> this happened to me a few days ago. You know, <laughs> it's still alive. That yeah, and I said yeah, but it's okay. This is not that. Yeah, <laughs> please, can you bring me something else? Yeah, and they have potatoes and potatoes. So <laughs> you know, it's like that. So. Yes, Kaustu, we have uh, uh, nearly uh, uh, finishing this wonderful interview. Dear friends, if you have anything to ask or uh, comment, please do. So, but the last two questions or one question is, so this for me, the spirituality and uh, science are not two opposites, yeah, but actually they, com they are complementary fields. So, 
uh, first step for a reconciliation maybe with, with all the scientists that are doing now all these researches and their open mind and open heart, maybe is slowly made, yeah? But what should we do as humans in order to make this, this connection, this merging faster? What is your advice and what should we be careful for? I think more than faster, we should be hoping for a change that is more sustained. But there is a sense of urgency, surely, because if we move too far away from the spiritual approach, then humanity is definitely going to be doomed yeah. because material science does not have all the answers and material science is about building lots of boxes and it will become very uh, fanatic at some point. Yeah. So we have to hope that this will change. The only way this can change is if the whole of humanity starts to change their, uh, what do you call, approach of um, material science and keep an open heart not to think about things only with the brain, but also to start entering the domain of feelings, the domain of the heart and the domain of spirituality, the domain of love. Priority and enough evidence. And this can work if we don't measure success only in terms of financial or material success. That's the problem today because everybody is now measuring success only financially or materially. Yeah. And when you look at somebody like my grandfather, my grandfather was very successful in my view. He was one of the greatest successes of yoga in the modern era. But he never owned a house ever in his life. He never even had a bank account. He only had enough money to live by. And he would always say, well, you need money to sustain you for a few months. That's enough. Because if you have skill, you will learn how to yeah. sustain after that. Exactly. But as yeah. now we measure success as, oh, if you have this car, if you have this house, if you have this job, if you have so much money, then all those are material things. We don't measure success as, are you happy? Is your heart open? Are you taking time to enjoy things in nature? Like do you watch the sunrise, do you watch the sunset, do you take time to smell the flowers, do you enjoy the change of the seasons? We don't measure success based on this. Yes. And that's unfortunately the problem. What's And that's what we as humanity, we should start changing that not a complete dependence on materialism, but to find a balance because one end or the other will not work in modern era. We cannot yes. give up material science completely. We cannot give up materialism that is not appropriate. At the same time, we must not give up spirituality completely. That is also not appropriate. We need to find a meeting point between the two and find a balance. Some days in some fields, maybe spirituality is more relevant. Materialism is less. In some other fields, maybe materialism will have much more importance, spirituality a bit less. But we have to find that balance. I yeah, feel so I'm it's... very privileged. I feel I'm very privileged because I use yeah. materialism, like computer, a flight, uh, etc., to fulfill my dharma, which is connected to spirituality. And so I'm very, very happy about it because I feel I'm finding that balance more and more uh, as. I'm aging slowly and gracefully, hopefully. Yes, exactly. So the spiritual silver, practice... Silver, silver hair. You, you need to... Uh, uh, you, you need to maybe... No, you will be great with gray hair. You don't need to, to put color on. <laughs> I'm not this is more to... for the ladies. Yeah. I'm not planning be... to put color no no you, you will be even more charming than you are smart and charming it's wow <laughs> so yeah. so it, it, 
it looks like <laughs> well, as it is yeah so uh it looks like um there's some sort of i don't know i am usually telling but not to a lot of people the spiritual revolution it, it needs to happen or maybe spiritual evolution yeah maybe it's even more better to say like that in order to to sustain uh, humanity on at least uh, let's say decent and ethical track and um, so this it is, is why it is, it is happening happen. so this is good so in the end uh, this is why we we are also doing these talks uh, this is why we are also doing courses and retreats so as far as i know house to you can uh, invite people to go on your courses i was i am on randy on uh, the, the last one that you had that you have now there's a new one which is very very interesting also next next month's course we are doing on um, in november we are doing a course on meditation <coughs> using the gayatri mantra for the <coughs> nine astrological houses in vedic astrology so it's connected to the planets like the sun the moon uh, jupiter venus mercury mars etc uh, saturn very important uh, so there are gayatri mantras for that and that is what we are going to teach and uh, implement it in practices so this is something that people are welcome to join and uh, going to do a very very fascinating uh, retreat in december please join if you can it's uh, called master your mind <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah i i'm doing the the retreat for slovenian people uh but also uh, the other are welcome to slovenia we are going to have a, a three day retreat in a nice monastery uh with very very good energy in the site Mostly, uh, we will do Vin Yoga therapy, meditation, mantra meditation, chanting. So it's going to be uh, a very, very nice uh, goodbye from the old year 2021. And uh, that you can also enter in the new year a little bit more energized and on the right, uh, more the right track. So Slovenian people were be welcome. Uh, I will put uh, a post um, here so you can uh, check the internet page, my page and uh, Kaustubas page course. Uh, Kaustubas uh, course, yeah. So we, we are going to... I'm very uh, amazed and happy that you're going to do a uh, an offline retreat. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to do offline because it's really very, it's going to be, the, the people also sleep there in this uh, very old monastery uh, and the food is going to be great. So, and we are going to connect uh, and, uh, you know, because if we are in a group and if we are offline, like alive, you know, face to face uh, without the screen, the energy is um, is uh, is better. The vibrations are better. The heart to heart it's better. So, I find this on all my retreats so so uh, potent and so powerful. So, I decided to go for that. Yeah, and uh, um, so warmly welcome everyone on my retreat and Kaus Tubas course. As said, we will post the uh, the links below. But uh, in the end, and in, in the end, Kastuba, I am thank you for uh, I'm thanking you for all wonderful answers that uh, that you gave us, uh, and uh, we are looking forward to another interview. I think uh, uh, you can you can give us uh, titles if you want suggestions. Write me or Kastuba, and we will uh, prepare an interview. And now we are going to ask Hausuba for another final chant, uh, maybe as Maria Alejandra Sierra Hernandez asked here, to how the ancient wisdom can actually heal the future and awake maybe, yeah, more of the uh, 
us people yeah okay. thank you thank you everybody for being here thank you Brahma Vidap no Tiparam Tadesha Bhukta Satyam Yana Manantam Brahma Yo Vedanitam Guhayam Parame Yoman Soshnute Sarvan Kaman Sam Brahmana Vipaschite Tim Tasmadva Etasmad Atmana Akasha Sambhuta Akasha Dvayo Vayo Ragni Agni Rapaha Adhya Prathavi Prathavya Oshadhaya Oshadibhyo Annam Annat Purusha Sava Esha Purusho Tasyidami Vashiraha Ayandakshina Paksha Ayamatma Vidam Pucham Pratishtha Tadapyesha Shloko Bhavati Om Shanti 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 Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.